A2 maths, Newton Raphson method. Okay, so Newton Raphson's method is a method of finding the root or solution to some function f of x. So if you look at this example here, I'll show you what I mean by finding the solution. So there's our function just there. So Newton Raphson method can help you find an approximation for that root. So this can be very handy if you can't find a solution for f of x equaling naught. That's what Newton Raphson does. Okay, so um, and it's an alternative to the previous numerical method of looking at forming an iterative method. So what the method does is it uses more to do with tangents and differentiation. So this method finds a tangent to help us find an approximation for that root. OK, so let's say, for example, I take X naught as my first um, approximation. You can see it's not very good. All right? It's quite far away from that. All right? It's not a very good approximation. So what you can do is you can take or find the gradient at that point. If you find the gradient at X equals naught and you find out where that gradient line crosses x then that would give you a better approximation so i find the gradient at the point where i'm guessing i draw the line of the gradient there and what i'm looking for is where that line crosses the x-axis and i call that my x1 now that x1 is a better approximation than x naught because the gradient is starting to point more towards where the curve is going so it's guess because you're pointing towards where the curve is going. And if they both cross, then it should be a better approximation. Right, now you can repeat the process. Once you know x1, I find a tangent where x1 is. And because that's close to the previous one, hopefully that, that tangent just there, let's have a look. So there we go. I put the approximation in and you notice that that one again, by drawing the tangent, is again a good approximation, a better approximation than the previous one. And if I carry this process on, what I'm going to end up with is an approximation which is extremely good to as many decimal places or however high accuracy as you like. So I'm going to take x2, I substitute that into, um, I find the gradient at that point on my equation. So there we go. And you can see now it looks like I've, got, I've hit it smack on. All right, I won't be, but it would be a very, very good approximation. So that's the newton raphson method. So it's an alternative to the um, iterative method we saw previously, where you're just taking a value, you're plotting the gradient, and you're improving each time till you get closer and closer to the solution or the root in this case. Which is the same thing. Okay, so grab your notebooks. You don't uh, having an idea and having an awareness of how it works is one thing, but just being able to use the formula is the most important part for your exams. So the newton raphson method. Um, the formula looks like this. So you can take xn, and if you substitute it into both the function and the gradient function, and you take it away from your original guess, then that will be your next approximation. Okay? So you're taking your function, you're differentiating that function, and you're forming a, a quotient like that. And then you can just stick your whatever your first approximation is into those three places and out will pop your next approximation. That next approximation you can then put in there, there and there and so on. So you get an iterative formula like that. That formula is given to you in your formula books. What you need to make sure you can do, though, is differentiate the function first. So therefore you can write this part out. OK, pause if you need to take anything down. OK, so let's have a look at this question then. So again, just writing down that question for your notebooks. That exam question. Right, so the first bit is practicing some of those finding roots. And the second part is being able to use the newton raphson method. OK, so I'll give you an opportunity to just pause there if you need to. You're still copying it down. OK, so part A is trying to find a route between two values. If I can find a, a root between 3.5 and 4.5, at least I've got an idea of where my initial approximation should be. So I'm not miles away to start with. I can then use one of those values to start to focus in a little bit better. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. So the first one is how do I show a root is between two numbers? So we did that in a previous lesson. 
to show there's a root between these two. I know it's a continuous function because it's got no dividing. There's no there's no asymptotes coming in there. All right, so it's a nice continuous function. So if I can find that one's positive and one's negative, I can confidently say there is a root between those two. Somewhere would pass, pass with zero. So let's just try that. So I'm going to substitute 3.5 in. I'm going to substitute 4.5 in. And when I do that, 3.5, put in all those places, gets me 4.938. 4.5, when I substitute it in for all the x's, gets me minus 1.813. And because it's a continuous function, and because they go from positive to negative, there is a change of sign, I can confidently say there is definitely a root between those two values. Now I'm going to use Newton Raphson to help me find a better approximation than those two. Okay, so that's the first question done. That's often how the examiners put in these roots parts in both this question and in the previous um, numerical methods before using that, that other previous iterative method. All right, so now I've done the first part. Let's look at the second part then. So I'm going to take my part B and I need to set up Newton Raphson. Now, the moment I see the words Newton Raphson, I grab my formula book and I copy down the Newton Raphson formula. Now, to do the formula, I need f dash of x. I need not just f of x, but the differentiation of it. So I can differentiate that function. It's a nice straightforward function to differentiate because it's just a polynomial function. So I've got 4x cubed. I've got uh, 33x squared plus 76x minus 40. And of course, the 1 doesn't have a gradient, so therefore it disappears. So there we go. I've got f dash of x. I've got f of x. I think I can write out my formula now. So my formula is going to look like this. That's straight from the formula book. And I can fill in both that numerator and that denominator just there. There we go. There's my numerator and there's my denominator. So it's just that f function there, but with x is replaced for x ends. And I've also got the gradient function underneath with the x ends replaced for the x. So the x is replaced for x ends underneath. Right, so all I need to do now is the number crunching part. I can take 3.5, I can substitute it into all these individual places, so it's a bit of a pain, but then that would give me a new value, which should be an improvement from the 3.5. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, and I'll save you some legwork. I can do this first number crunching for you. So I stuck them all in there. That was my x naught. And when I did that, pressed equals, I get this. Yep, that's what I've just done, stuck in x naught. There's a value stuck in 3.5, just demonstrating what I'm doing the first one. And out pops the first answer, 4.231. So 4.231, notice it's um, between these two values, as I expected, and it'll be a better approximation of the root. But I can improve it further. I can take that value. I can substitute it into all these values, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to substitute it all in. There we go. And that gives me a new x value, x2, which is, again, is a better approximation than the previous one. All right. Again, still between those two roots, but it's starting to target in on it. Notice it's still only true for one significant figure at the moment. Both go to four. So I need to carry on until I get to three significant figures. So I'll go to my calculator. If you've got the, the ant set up, all right, I'll remind you how to do that, just so you're aware. Um, so to use the ants button on your calculator, type in 3.5 and press equals. Then your calculator knows that 3.5 is your first answer. OK, so type in 3.5, press equals straight away. Once you do that, then you can type in this formula just here. But instead of xn, you use the ants button on your calculator. So ants minus ants to the power of 4 minus 11, lots of ants cubed, so on and so on. Once you've typed that all in once, then when you press equals, out will pop 4.231. Then all you need to do again is press the equals button. And what that does is that's become your new ants, your new answer. So therefore, this, when you press equals, will just automatically put that in for you. So there we go, get to that, put the 4.12 in, and I get down to 4.13. This, these two look correct to two significant figures now, 
but they are different to three significant figures. So I'm going to need another one just to confirm. And as soon as I do that, that answer becomes exactly the same as the previous one. All right, so obviously more decimal places, but I can definitely stop there. I'm confident that the root is going to be 4.13 to three significant figures. And if you try substituting 4.13 back into the original, you'll notice that it gets very close to zero. Okay, so the answer, just to make sure we write it out at the end, is 4.13 to three significant figures, but you still go to four just to confirm it. Right, so what I'd like you to do is just have a think about um, when can't you use the Newton mass of method? When does it fail? All right, so have a think about the answer to that before you just uh, carry on. So just pause and have a think. Okay, so if you manage to come up with either of these two answers, uh, very well done. First problem we might have is if you get something that can't be differentiated. If your function can't be differentiated, then you can't use the Newton Raphson method because you won't be able to form that denominator. So that would cause a problem and therefore you'd have to pick a different method. The other situation that causes a problem is because you're substituting your value in and finding the gradient, if the gradient comes out to be a stationary point, then what happens is your line just goes horizontal to the x-axis. So therefore, it never crosses the x-axis, so therefore you can't find your next solution. So if it can't be differentiated, or if your first value is a stationary point, then therefore you would, your Newton Raphson method would fail. Of course, the first one you can't do much with, because you can't differentiate it, you can't use the formula at all. The second one's easily solvable, you just pick a different value that's not a stationary point, and therefore it should work. Okay? Right, what I'd like you to do is just practice some of those skills with Newton Raphson by completing the exercise 4.1 on page 375.